<laughs> if you're paying attention today to the onslaught of social media signals trying to hijack your amygdala and impregnate your mind with fear and anxiety, you are awake to the fact that it feels like the world is going to shit. You are awake to the fact that it feels like the world is falling apart. And while digging a little deeper finds all kinds of reasons to be optimistic about the state of things, there is a lot to seemingly worry about. <laughs> Among uh, all these things to worry about, of course, is the unsustainable resource depletion of our current planet and the rhetoric that you're hearing in the political space and the just doom and gloom vibe that we seem to be drowning in. As they say, if you don't have ADD today, you're not paying attention. We're all suffering from bandwidth anxiety. You don't even know what to pay attention to. The whole thing is so overwhelming and nauseatingly annoying. So here's the deal. Daniel put it to me this way. You could look at humanity through two different lenses, two different interpretive frameworks, two metaphors to try to make sense of what is happening. On the one hand, you might say it's clear humanity is a cancer, right? We are consuming our resources at an exponential rate. Um, we are like runaway cells, uh, uncontrolled cell growth, spreading our tentacles across the planet, eating up the resources, and eventually in a suicidal fashion, going to kill our host, mother planet, spaceship Earth, Mother Earth, etc., etc. So, is humanity a cancer? And I, are we, again, in a suicidal fashion, going to commit <laughs> suicide by killing our host planet? That is one metaphor that can be used to uh, make sense of the state of things. Um, and it's really depressing, and it feels like there is no cure, and what the fuck do we do? But there is another metaphor that Daniel put uh, forward. For me that I think is actually more effective and beautiful and actually empowers us to have a sense of agency and volition to do something about the state of things. The other metaphor that he said is, what if humanity is a fetus, right? Now think about that again. When a fetus is at the edge of the birth canal, the moments just before birth are quite turbulent, right? The mother, the host, can bleed a lot. The fetus can actually kill its mother while trying to be born, and it can kill itself. In other words, the moment before birth can be quite turbulent. It can feel as though we're approaching the end, even though we might just be approaching the beginning. So seen through that metaphor, the idea that the collective human organism is a fetus, living through that turbulent moment in the birth canal. And what we're seeing around us, the blood, the aching pain, the suffering, the chaos, right? Could potentially kill the host. We could kill our mother. We could kill ourselves as we aim to be reborn. Or, or we could leverage exponentially emerging transformative technologies, which have always been a double-edged sword. But if used correctly, our intellect combined with advances in biotech, mastering the information processes of biology, and nanotech, the engines of creation, patterning the atoms of reality, the building blocks of reality, and artificially intelligent algorithms that could help us resolve the best way to use our resources, we could come out of this mess and actually enter a phase change, right? We could be the larva that's about to turn itself into a butterfly. The moment of birth could be an ontological awakening, a radical transformation, a speciation, as we become something more, as we emerge into a phase change, into a state change, into a radically different species. This literally might be the last gasp of Humans 1.0 as we are born into Humans 2.0. Now, as you guys know, I am a techno-optimist. I believe that technology, if used correctly, can be used to help us overcome all obstacles. I believe that increasingly, 
As technology continues to become smaller, denser, and more powerful, we will continue to merge with our non-biological props and scaffoldings. We will become a symbiotic organism. We will have deeper integration with our tools until the, the distinction between the born and the made all but disappears. This is akin to a singularity, a Cambrian explosion of mind, right? Like the moment that birthed language, right? If you draw a line in the sand, early hominids on the other side of that line could have not conceived of the world that would have been born with the emergence of language, a rich inner universe that was made possible, the kind of thinking that reveals to the mind what the mind thinks made possible by language. We might be approaching this kind of singularity, but we we got to <laughs> we've got to work together to bring this forth we're going to need a new kind of consciousness to solve the problems created by the old kind of consciousness. We are witnessing a revolution of the mind with advances in technology, psychology, neurobiology, and pharmacology, the four forces of ecstasy and leveraging altered states of consciousness for altered perceptions and therefore altered realities, because that is what we need. Um, I do believe that what is needed, again, is a revolution in consciousness. Don't forget that even the objective empirical world is still filtered through the prism of subjectivity. So in order to, in order to improve how we relate to one another, in order to, in order to improve this state of things, all these uh, objective things that need to be upgraded still need to be mediated through subjective experience. So what we really need to start with is upgrading our cognitive machinery. We really need to build better minds. I'm also really passionate about the role of design and architecture in this space. Uh, there's this wonderful book called uh, Cognitive Architecture, which talks about the psychological effect of built environments, the nature of the embodied interface within which we live. We need to build better environments, better cities, better feedback loops, better environments to build better minds. Of course, language becomes crucially important. We're living in a world made of language. We're living in a world constructed out of human linguistics. I mean, again, we relate to one another, the interface of our own and thinking is the prism is 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 a prism made of language and as ontological coaches will tell us language is not just descriptive language is generative the way you describe reality becomes reality you become what you behold you become that which you describe language is generative so all of these tools taken together look i'm going on and on and on and on and on but these are just some of the things i've been thinking about um, as we try to make sense of the state of things. So again, humanity, ah, in the face of despair, might come to realize that we are the fetus about to be born into a radically new world. So let us, um, let us not sit back idly um, as we watch the news in, in a state of constant depression, but instead leverage our intelligence, leverage our collective tools, leverage social media, and erupt with a fire in our belly and go and do something about the state of things.